All right, next challenge is delegation. Let's go ahead and get a new instance. And Ethernaut is going to deploy an instance of these uh, contracts here. And you're going to notice that there are two contracts in this file. Okay, so that contract was successfully mined and it was deployed. So we now have an instance of our contract. Great. Now let's understand what the challenge is asking us to do. And the goal of this level is for you to claim ownership of the instance of this contract. So this is another ownership uh, hacking challenge, security challenge. Now there are some helpful hints here. And one thing that we're going to be asked to do is to look into Solidity's documentation on delegate call. And we're going to learn how that works. So if you're not familiar with that Solidity function, you're going to learn about it. And of course, we're also going to encounter some other things that we have already dealt with, like fallback methods and method IDs. So we're going to have to know a little bit about these things in order to complete this challenge. All right. So we know that the goal is to claim ownership. Now let's read the code. And of course, we have the pragma directive on top. And then we have the first contract in this file, which is delegate. And delegate has a state variable called owner. It's publicly available and it's a type of Ethereum address. And when this contract gets deployed, whoever deploys this contract gets passed into the constructor and the owner of this contract gets set. Okay. So the next function that we have here in this delegate contract is one called pwn, pwn, or poon, however you want to pronounce that. It's a public function. And this lets you set the owner of this delegate contract. Okay, so that's interesting, very cool. Now, we have a second contract here called delegation. And it also has a public state variable called owner of type Ethereum address. And it has this delegate reference or field, and it's gonna be of type delegate. So, there's going to be this delegate state variable that's of type delegate right over here. So basically what it's going to be is it's going to reference this contract here. Now in the constructor of delegation, whoever is deploying this contract, in our case it's Ethernaut, is passing in the address of this contract to the constructor of the delegation contract. And this syntax, as you already know if you've been watching these videos, uh, is what allows you to set the address of a deployed contract so you can communicate with it and call the functions on it. So in the constructor of the delegation contract, when it gets first deployed, the constructor gets called and it sets the address of this deployed delegate contract and the owner of this contract here called delegation also gets sent to whoever deploys this contract. Okay, so message.sender can either refer to an externally owned account, which is a user wallet address, or it can also refer to a smart contract account. Now, at the bottom here of the delegation contract, we have a fallback function, and it's a fallback function because it has no name. And what is happening here is there is a Boolean result that's being deduced by this delegate call function right over here. So delegate call is going to be taken in as an argument message.data. Now the question becomes, which contract are we interacting with when there are two contracts in a file? And usually it's the second one right over here. And the way that we can confirm that 
is in the console by typing contract, which represents the instance of our deployed contract dot ABI. And if we open that, we see three methods here. We see owner, which is a state variable, but both contracts have that. But we also have a constructor. Both contracts have that. But we also have a fallback. The fallback only exists in this delegation contract right over here. So because we access the ABI of our deployed contract instance, we know that we are or that we can only interact with this contract here. Okay, so that's the contract we're interacting with. Now, the next thing that we need to do is understand exactly what delegate call is. This is an unfamiliar function for a lot of people. So if you go over to the Solidity docs and search for delegate call, you're gonna see that this is, this is a call that a contract can execute that can dynamically load code from a different address at runtime. And storage, current address, and balance still refer to the calling contract. Only the code is taken from the called address. So let me break that down for you. So delegate call allows you to call a function on another contract. And we're gonna be calling this function on the delegate contract, okay? So that's what delegate call does. It allows you to call or invoke a function on another contract. But what it also lets you do is it lets the called contract influence the state of the calling contract. So delegation is the calling contract. It's calling delegate when it calls delegate call. And the function that it's gonna call is passed in as an argument here to delegate call. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to call this fallback function on delegation and that's gonna call the, we're also gonna pass it an argument and we're gonna pass it this function signature here and that's gonna execute delegate call on the delegate contract, which is this. And that's going to execute this P or Poon function. Now, what this does is this change the owner, it changes the owner state variable and it sets it to whomever is calling this contract, right? excuse me, whoever is calling this function. And in our case, it's gonna be this function. This smart contract account is gonna be message.sender. But the owner that's gonna be set is not the delegate contracts owner, it's gonna be the delegation owner field. So that's how delegate call works. It allows you to execute a function on another different smart contract, which is what we're doing here, it allows you to specify what function you want to call in that separate function, but that separate or called function actually changes the storage and the state variables of the calling contract. So when we do this, we are going to change the state variable of owner. So this is a really delicate you know, function to execute because you're basically trusting this contract to access the state of this contract. So that's how we're gonna hack this. We are going to change the owner of the delegation contract by calling this unnamed function or fallback function. It's gonna call the delegate call function, which is gonna call this delegate contract and we're gonna tell it which function to call and it's going to change the state variable of the owner, not of the delegate contract, but of the delegation contract. Okay, and that's how we're gonna do it. So let's first go to our console and contract ABI, as you know, is the delegation contract because the ABI matches this contract. And we're just gonna make note of the owner. And it's this, oops, I'm just gonna go up here contract.owner. 
My bad. And it's this address. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to get a function signature for this PWN function. Okay, and the way that you do that is by using a Web3 library that's available to you because you have MetaMask installed called SHA3. Uh, excuse me, it's web3.utils.sha3. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to basically create a variable called function signature and we're going to pass it the function the function signature for the poon function so let's go ahead and create a variable called um excuse me let's go ahead here and create a variable for pwn func signature and it's going to call the web3 library the sha3 function on the utils object and we're going to create a sort of SHA-3 signature for this excuse me for this function here right over here pwn poon however you want to call it now what we're going to do is on our deployed instance of our contract we're going to call the unnamed function or the fallback function called transaction and then we're going to pass it a data key, and it's gonna be the function signature of the poon function, okay? And this is how you pass data into a fallback function or an unnamed function. You just use the data key. Now hit enter, and you're going to pay the gas fee and the transaction is going to send. And now what's gonna happen is we're gonna make note of the contract owner again. And the contract owner is gonna be you. It's going to be the person who called this function. So my user wallet address OX8772, OX8772. So by hacking this, this delegation contract, by calling the delegate call function and by passing the signature of the poon function into this fallback function, it actually called this function right over here in the delegate contract, but it changed the owner state variable within the calling contract, which is delegation. And as a result, we have successfully learned not only what delegate call is, but we have also learned about method IDs, how to create the SHA-3 uh, hash of a signature uh, in Solidity, and we have successfully completed the challenge. So go ahead and click on Submit Instance, pay the gas fee, and let's just give this a moment to successfully mine this transaction and you have beat this challenge. Good job.